If you're thinking of giving wild camping a go, getting all of your kit together can be quite daunting. And one of the hardest things to choose is your tent. So in this video, I'm gonna run through just a few of the things that you need to consider when you're choosing a tent for wild camping. And one of the first things to consider, I think, is your budget. So I'm assuming that you're just thinking about getting into the hobby. So you don't wanna be spending hundreds and hundreds of pounds on all of your kit. You've got loads of things to buy anyway. If you're just getting into the hobby, I would say to you, don't overspend on anything. Although having said that, camping and wild camping has become really popular over the last year or two. Resale prices are really high. A lot of tents you'll find are out of stock in a lot of shops. So if you do manage to get one and you decide that wild camping is not for you, you're probably likely to get most of the money back that you spent on the tent if you decided to sell it on. I'd recommend for your first wild camping tent, starting at the kind of budget end of the spectrum, around 100, 150 pounds. And then as you get into the hobby, if you want to, you can always upgrade later. The next thing to think about, I think, is the size of the tent that you want. You're gonna to want to go for a one-man tent or a two-man tent. One-man tents are obviously a lot smaller, they come with a smaller pack size, they're usually lighter than a two-man tent, but they can feel quite coffin-like. If you're a little bit claustrophobic or you like the extra space, they can feel a bit, not overwhelming, but a bit claustrophobic. Having said that, I've got a Wild Country Helm 1 tent that is a one-man tent, and because of the design of it, it does feel quite spacious inside, so it's got a really high roof in there. It is quite wide, it's not, you know, obviously massively wide, because it's still a one-man tent, but. It's wide enough for my sleep mat and then enough space down the side to put all of my stuff, my table, my boots and my, and my bag. I have been inside other one-man tents that do feel quite claustrophobic. I've got a Lanshan 1 Pro that definitely feels a bit more coffin-like than the Helm 1, but I still find it okay. Some people won't, so just keep that in mind. If you go for a two-man tent, you're obviously getting more space in there, but you're trading that off against a bigger pack size, bigger weight, and usually a little bit more cost as well. But if you're gonna go camping with somebody else or with your dog, or you just want extra space, then go for a two-man tent. Something like the Cloud Peak 2 or Cloud Up 2 from Nature Hike, the Lansham 2 from 3FUL or the Taiji 2 from them are really good options to look at. Think about the structure of the tent you want as well. So if you use trekking poles, you might as well try a trekking pole tent because again, you're saving weight. You're not carrying tent poles when you've already got your trekking poles with you. If you don't use trekking poles and you never plan to, then obviously look at something that is poled or has tent poles. And there's a couple of things that some people make a really big deal about and I've never really understood why. They're not deal breakers, but they're things to be aware of. So. For the tent, do you want it to be freestanding? And that means that once it's pitched, it's got the poles in there, you can move it around before you peg it down. So tents like the Cloud Peak 2, 3FUL Taiji 2, you can move them around wherever you need to. And I have moved my Taiji 2 a couple of times when I've camped in it. And it's dead easy just to unpeg it and move it if you need to and peg it down again. The last time I moved it, I left my sleep mat and my sleeping bag and all my stuff inside it, just moved it and then tied it up afterwards. But if you choose a decent pitch in the first place and you're not an absolute noob like me, you shouldn't need to move your tent. And the other thing is whether it's inner pitch first, and that means the inner is separate from the outer. So you pitch your mesh inner with the poles and then you throw the fly sheet over the top afterwards as a second step. People worry about this because if it's raining, you're gonna get rain inside your inner during that period where you haven't put the fly sheet on yet. For most, if not all of these kinds of tents, so you can get a footprint, and that means that you can attach the poles to the footprint to give you the structure. You can put the fly sheet over, and then you can crawl inside and attach the inner inside the fly sheet, so you don't get rain in there. I mean, most of these can be pitched in five, six, seven minutes anyway, so unless it's real torrential rain, you're not gonna get a lot of rain in there because you're talking probably one or two minutes between having the mesh in a there without the fly sheet on it and throwing the fly sheet over the top. So it's a big deal for some people, it's not for others, it's not for me. I know there's some of the MSR tents that are in a pitch first, the Nature Hike Cloud Up 2 is in a pitch first as well, and the Alp Kit Soloist. So just something to bear in mind, I'm just trying to give you guys some things to consider and things to look at as you go through the process of finding your first tent. The next thing to consider, I think, is whether you want a three season tent or a four season tent. Now it's unlikely that you'll get a real four season tent at the kind of budget that we're talking about. But what manufacturers do is they base their three or four season labeling on the inner of the tent. So if the inner is made from pretty much all mesh, they'll call it a three season tent. If it's a solid material for the inner, they'll call it a four season tent. 
Now, a real four-season tent has stronger poles. It has an outer that goes all the way down to the floor to stop snow coming up and inside your tent. But usually at this budget end of the market, it's all about the inner. So a three-season inner is a little bit lighter than a four-season inner. It's usually a tiny bit cheaper as well. You might be talking 10, 20 pounds difference. And they're really good for sort of spring and summer when you've got hot air, you need to get ventilation through your tent to avoid loads of condensation. A four season inner is not mesh, so you don't get as much ventilation through your tent, but in a trade off to that, it keeps your tent a little bit warmer in those colder months in autumn and winter. For your first tent, I would recommend trying wild camping for the first time in the warmer months. So it shouldn't really matter which you go for, but my personal preference would be to go for a four season inner because I find I can use that all year. In the warmer months, if it is too hot and I need some ventilation, I'll just open the door on the inner to let some air through. You might wanna think about the color of your tent. I tend to go for sort of green and brown colors to try and blend in. I think that's the whole point of wild camping is to leave no trace. And for me, that includes other people in the environment looking around and you know, walking through and not seeing a fluorescent yellow tent. I have had a fluorescent yellow tent before. Each to their own again, it's just my own personal preference, but it might be something you want to think about or it might not. One thing you definitely want to consider is the weight of your tent. So again, at this budget end of the market that we're talking about, there are some tents out there that are three, three and a half, even four kilos. Now for me, for a wild camping or backpacking tent, you wanna be around the sort of two kilo mark, if not less. Don't obsess over every gram, um, but just try and stick around that two kilo mark, because that's a weight that's relatively easy to carry and usually translates to a decent pack size to fit in your bag as well. Another thing to consider is where you're gonna get your tent from. So you might wanna to go to a shop like Decathlon or Go Outdoors or Blacks or one of the other shops that are under the same brand name. Um, benefits of that are, you can get it there and then. A lot of the shops have tents set up so you can see the physical size of it. You can jump inside and see what it feels like to be inside it. You can return it to the shop if there's any problems and you'll get a standard warranty with it as well. But there are a lot of budget brands out there from China like 3FUL and Nature Hike that you won't find in shops like that. So for those you wanna look at websites like Outdoor Gear Essentials or Camper Lists, I'll put links to the, all of these below. Six months or a year or so ago, I would have said AliExpress as well because they had the cheapest prices. You did have to wait, you know, two, three months for things to arrive, but the price was the cheapest. But now tax has added on, deliveries a lot more. It's really not worth looking on there, I don't think, unless it's a specific tent that you can't find anywhere else. And don't forget looking secondhand as well. So we're talking here about buying your first wild camping tent. Best case, borrow one from a friend. I've lent my own tents out to people that want to give it a go. Try eBay, try Facebook Marketplace. There's special groups on Facebook for people that are selling wild camping kit. It's not always about buying brand new stuff. Sometimes you're better off starting out with stuff that's secondhand trying it out, and then you can always pass it on again if you don't use it. So with all of this, it is personal choice really. It's about thinking through what your criteria are, finding a tent or a set of tents that meet them, and then look at reviews, look at videos on YouTube of people pitching these tents, look how hard it is or how easy it is, look at videos of people actually camping in them, see how they get on. Get as much information as you can about one of these tents before you buy one. A lot of the time you're buying blind, so you need to arm yourself with as much information as possible. I'll put links to a few tents that you might want to consider in the description below. Drop me a comment if you've got any questions and I'll get back to you and I'll see you in the next one.